Welcome back to Carnes Motorsports Shop here. Uh, got the old LLY Duramax back in. Uh, she's got a fresh set of head gaskets, fresh set of heads, and uh, she's about race ready. So uh, in the process of that, I noticed that the driver's side ball joint, the upper one, was ready to uh, separate. So I got ball joints, and in this episode, we're gonna change them. Stick with me. So, in order to show you what we got here, because I'll be honest, I, I never really knew how to properly check for ball joints. I just, I found this by accident, but you put a jack underneath the bottom of your lower control arm, you jack it up till the weight's off the tire, and the tire's just floating, and then obviously put a jack stand underneath the frame. Harbor Freight one, you know, apparently they, they collapse, but um, you gotta be, gotta be safe. So you put your jack stand underneath the frame, get the weight off the tire and then you give her the old shake and as you can see it ain't supposed to do that and the funny part is this truck not chopping tires let go of the steering wheel at 60 mile an hour drives straight to freaking arrow I had no idea until I was jacking it up when I was doing the head gaskets take the front tires off jacking it up and the tire goes dunk so uh yeah the upper upper's bad the lower's still tight um i have I, ha I have all four the passenger side's tight the smart thing to do would be to change all four but we're gonna see how big of a fight this is i might just throw this upper in tonight i'm a little pressed for time and it's freaking cold out here so stick with me and we're gonna we're gonna go from there so yeah step one jack it up and keep the jack underneath the lower control arm because if you don't and you zap that upper ball joint the lower control arm is going to go because i'm not taking the tension off the torsion bars obviously like i said before put a jack stand under the frame of the truck so it's you know not going to fall on you i mean yeah it would suck to have the jack kick out of that lower control arm but it would suck even more if you didn't have anything under the frame of the truck so yeah here we go Take the tire off, and uh, well, normally you'd use a 10 milli to take the bracket off maybe, but that doesn't want to play the game. Everything else on this truck, it's a fight. So we'll just use a screwdriver, we'll pop him, pop him right there. And you can either do the whole control arm or just press the ball joint in. Um, I'm gonna just, try and press the ball joint in and uh well i had a 18 millimeter ratchet wrench i could have swore i did i guess i guess i don't so probably like everything i don't have the right tool we'll try a 19 maybe that'll get it gotta loosen it obviously And like I say, you gotta keep that jack underneath there, otherwise if you pop this, it's gonna it's gonna get bad. I did the I did the inner outer tie rods idler arm, pitman arm, um, when I first got this truck, they were bad, and I was like, oh, the ball joints, they've been done, they, they're they probably good too, but I wasn't checking them properly, so who knows, it was probably bad when I got it, you take that off, and then supposedly, you can smack the spindle here, and it should pop loose. I ain't never had no luck with doing that. So we're gonna get the air pickle fork out and just do it that way. We got the pickle fork on the air hammer. Let's see how this is gonna work. that now we're on the other 
just ask this guy so we don't break in. I don't want to have to buy one of those. So there, we'll just kind of rotate that out of the way and maybe not use the wire to, or the brake hose to hold it. Would I don't know, I guess we could zap this bolt out here. Fire again, maybe not use the ABS wire. I said normally you would just change the whole control arm, but we're not going to do that. And I don't know why I'm doing this by hand. I have a nice Milwaukee M12 ratchet, but nice to kick it old school every now and then. There, we'll just kind of let him chill like that. We can kind of keep him out of there. And now I got a ball joint press, so bear with me. I'll get that set up and see if we pop this guy out. You get your ball joint press set up like that. I know you're not supposed to, but normally I put an impact on it. But, uh, can't really fit an impact on the top there, so let's see what we got. There's probably a snap ring on the bottom. I didn't look. Should be able to get it from there. Hopefully you can hear me. If not, we're just gonna put some music over it. So there's that. It's up there. Bottom the ball joint press was bottoming out right there. I'm just gonna get the air hammer and give it a right up underneath there and go from there. That's another tool. If you're gonna do this, you gotta have an air hammer. Let's see if we can get this. There we go. Don't have to get the wire rubber boot. There you go. There's your upper ball joint out. The, the bottom one, if I had more time and wasn't pressed for time, like everything I would do the bottom one as well but we're just going to do this top one and maybe uh it'll s save me from <laughs> crashing the truck so yeah let me get the we get stuff cleaned up and we'll uh we'll install the new one well I lied to you I figured I've had the front tire on off this truck so many freaking times that uh I'm just going to change that lower one in there so basically you gotta take the steering knuckle off, which, you know, take him off. And, uh, you know, take the brakes off, take him off, press it out of there. Of course, I forgot to hit record on the camera and uh, till just now. So I pressed it out of there with the ball joint press. She, she's in there. I had to uh, give it a little thermal expansion, map gas torch, and uh, to get it out of there, but it's out. Um, this is a Harbor Freight ball joint press set, which works, works great. I borrowed it off my dad because I haven't bought one yet, but, uh, he had some, I don't know if they're snap on what the hell brand they were, but they're good. You know, great big heavy duty thing ones that he got. Knew a guy that worked at the place that built them or something, and, uh, they come in for warranty and whatnot. And they couldn't really like fix them and send them back out so somehow anyways he ended up with them and we were doing them on uh doing ball joints on the front of a 2011 cummins truck that i owned and they didn't fare too well after that that was we had to heat had to heat the axle shaft and this was a pretty rust free truck you know it uh didn't have a lot of miles on it or anything it had about 55 ish 60 ish and the ball joints were shot obviously because it's a dodge um 
and uh, yeah, we had to heat heat it up and heat it up, and then you'd rear it and it'd go think as it would move like just the slightest bit. And then you had to catch right up again, a little more heat on it, and go right up tight, pulling, 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 and go think and then move just the slightest bit. That was that was uh pretty interesting. Um, and this truck, you know, good southern truck, it's it's not rusty like you probably would play hell doing this on a new York truck that anyways i digress so they're all out so now we'll, i guess we'll press them back in so normally i would go with moogs i'm a big moog fan but uh recently they just their stuff hasn't been that great i mean i use moog inner and outer tie rod ends and whatever on it i mean it's lifetime warrantied but like tommy boy said i can take a crap in a box and mark it guaranteed i got spare time so um i had good luck with these mevo techs um terrain tough extremes i'm sure they come from the land of really cheap stuff just like everything else does but uh i figured i'd give these a whirl they were i think they were within dollars of what the moves cost and I, like i said i had really good luck with the last set that i used so i figured we'd try these and i mean they say right on the box right there if you can read that if it'll focus they say overbuilt for durability i mean you, you just you just can't get no better than that but anyways that's the part number for the front of this it's txk 6693 that's the lower and uh i mean they're pretty decent quality i like the i really do like the boots the boots are on them are really nice um obviously they're greasable and this has a little dent here in the control arm so the grease fitting has to go to the back but I guess we'll get this guy figured out here what we got to do to press him in and send him home. Well, and here we go. You got to get the proper sequence of spacers and three adapters and whatnot in here and just get him started. And boy, it seemed when I stuck it up there that it was going to go way harder than this. I was a little nervous, I'll be honest with you. I guess they should shut up till it's in there. Getting closer. If it don't fit, just force it. I'm guessing it's all she wrote. Come on out of there, guy. God. You asked me, you lift weights? No, nope, just work on Duramax. Torquing the freaking heads down on this thing was a hell of a workout. Well, I'll be dipped. She's in. She's up flush. And I even named the grease grease fitting hole in the right direction. I love it when a plan comes together, you know? She's in. I know that she's happy about it, but she's in there. So now I guess we put the top one in? I don't know. First time I've ever done this. And you guys that wrench on your own stuff, love it when you grab a grease rag. Think, ah, you know, I got to just wipe this grease off my hands. And uh, turns out you've already previously enjoyed that grease rag. And it puts more grease on than it takes off. I mean, that's just stuff that people that don't do this just, just can't appreciate. But you got the proper sequence of spacers and whatnot in here. And I had that light where you could actually see stuff with it there for a minute. But, um got the proper sequence of stuff here so i guess we'll we'll send this guy home see how he likes his new home probably like probably like living in that cardboard box but he's gonna like being underneath the front of the almighty duramax but you know we all got to do stuff we don't like so he might as well he might as well be miserable like the rest of us you know 
I was gonna just buy a control arm and change it, but I don't wanna have to get an alignment. Probably should anyways. I aligned it when I did the tie rods, I aligned it with a string. And it seems to seems to be all right. But I figured the less I disturb on the front, the better off I'd be. He's home. Um, looking at the control arm, I didn't think there's anything really wrong with it. The rubber bushings in there, they seem tight. I mean, probably not as tight as a brand new one, but... Can't all be perfect. This truck's this truck has cost me a small fortune in the last month. So they're all pressed in there. There's a snap ring for this guy. The old one didn't have a snap ring. This one does. So let me look at the other one. So I wasn't smart enough to look at this one before I put it in and see where that damn snap ring's got to go. Normally, I would, you know, it's going to rust. You're never going to get that snap ring back out. However, you go to do this again, you're just going to change the control arm because, you know, it's like the cab braces under that Ford I did the floor pan in. In a previous video, you can usually get one floor pan replacement before you got to worry about the brace under the floor. And of course that truck proved me wrong, but usually you can. So I would imagine you probably replace the ball joints in the control arm once before you ought to change the whole thing. You know what I mean? So I guess what I'm getting at is I just got to look and see where the groove is on the guy. And if I can get the snap ring in there, I'm going to put him on there. And if he rusts in there, then I guess we're just going to change the control arm. You know what I mean? So bear with me for a second. So I put the stupid snap ring in there and uh, went to <laughs> use my snap ring pliers, but these channel lock snap ring pliers are freaking amazing, but I lost the spring out of mine, which they still work, but it makes them a little more cantankerous. Well, really needed a 90 degree on the you know end, and of course I dug them out, but couldn't find the Allen wrench that would fit them, and I'm too lazy to walk the three feet. My toolbox is literally... The like camera's sitting on my toolbox, you know. Too lazy to walk over there, dig an Allen wrench out. I hell, I'll fight with him. I'll fight with him. Well, 10 minutes later, um, and I had to get these fancy ones here. And we got, long story short, we got a stupid snap ring on there. So he's on there. Um, could probably completely didn't need to put it on there, but whatever, man. He's on there. So um, now we got to fight this guy on. Which wipe the old grease off because don't want that to contaminate the new stuff. I should say that I immediately regret my decision to wipe it off. Good stuff. Red Mystic. That's what I use for my chassis components. Red Mystic seems to work pretty good. Not sponsored by them, but Mystic, if you're watching. And you wanted to send me a case of your grease, I'd put it to good use. Especially for uh, my future endeavors, which we'll talk about later. But, uh, oh, that's, oh my goodness, I just put my finger in more freaking grease. God, I don't know. I don't know why I do this. This was not fun to get off. I fought with it, fought with it, fought with it, and then it just kind of fell off. Too bad it wouldn't just fall back on. Probably the proper procedure is to take the axle shaft out, but way more effort than I want to put into this. We just got to get the proper sequence here. Everything be happy for a minute. I'm sure the GM guys just cringing, watching some dumb redneck. It's too lazy to do it the right way. But hey, 
Bum Redneck, if you can save yourself five minutes, or I don't even know how many minutes it would take to pull that axle shaft out, but whatever. I didn't do it. And this will probably be a really long video. Unless you can't even hear me, and then in that case it won't even be a video. So, now it's pretty much just pulled everything back together. And, uh, go from there. So, guy was really feeling froggy, he'd do the other side, but that's just out of the question at this current venture in my life. You know, I keep telling myself, oh, bro, you, you enjoy this, you enjoy this, you know. It's fun, it's fun, you, you enjoy it. But... I don't, just don't know if I do, you know, but that's a story for a different day. So make sure that everything's halfway copacetic here. Try and draw that axle nut, whatever on there and the splines ain't happy. There is a torque spec for that. And we'll We'll torque it when it's back on the ground. You're gonna play how to torque it right now. Um, yeah, so that's the upper part. This is the lower. These guys, let me show you something here. These guys give you really, really, really neat cotter pins. They, they're really neat actually. They, you know, go through and normally you'd give it the old shape tree mechanic bend. You'd bend, you know, up around and then down around the other side there but these just go click and they click right into castle nut it's they're actually really neat really neat stuff i they don't this bubble tech don't sponsor me either but like i said i i really did like the ones that i put in it was in that blue and white ford that i used to have i put them in that and i i thought they were all right so i'll start the nut on that one we'll get the bag of parts for the upper you couldn't use them on just regular castle nuts though, because if you look, the castle nuts got that groove in there, and then these guys, they go through. I'm not gonna. Let's see, they go through, and they latch just like that. They're actually pretty cool, pretty pretty neat piece. I like it when you can use an impact. To tighten them because they sometimes they spin they just don't want to they just ain't happy with just ain't happy with life you know don't forget to hook the tie rod up or your tires are going to do the typical Duramax <laughs> little Duramax joke there oh come on you ain't been in there that long first winter this truck's ever seen actually so, like I said, pretty much you just bolt everything back together. So, let me let me do that off camera. I'm getting a drink of water here. I'd make a cup of coffee, but I left my cup inside. Took it in to wash it and whatever. Long story short, I don't have it anymore. But, uh, yeah, we'll bolt it together and I'll pick her up here in a few. So, a little trick, because I should have put the grease circ in before I put the stupid spindle back on there but when you put you want to put it in with a socket you can still get it in there with a socket we put it in there now the threads are you know sockets too deep and maybe they make a super shallow one i don't know but i don't have one little trick take a little piece of your grease rag and jam it in there and then stick that in there now your threads stick out and that'll hold it out. And you can also, like, say you got to reach way down in somewhere um, and, like, get a nut down in and you, you, and you can't hold it and they don't make magnetic sockets. Maybe they do, but there again, I don't have any. You can take your piece of your grease rag and you can stick it on there and then jam the nut in there or the bolt. And it gives it just enough resistance where you can hold it upside down and it won't fall out of there. Um, basically... Y bridge on one of these things <laughs> works wonders for that. So yeah, just a little, just a little trick. Basically, put the ball joints in, tighten the nuts. The bottom one you could use an impact on. I'm sure there's torque spec for it, but I usually just go till 
wicked tight and then I'll throw a ratchet on and just make sure it's wicked wicked tight and that you can line the holes up put these really cool really cool freaking clips in there and it'll lock in um, <clears throat> grease fittings are in I greased them um, I used a 90 on the top they had an option for a straight or a 90 and I it had a straight before and it wasn't a problem to grease it but I figured what the hell we'll use a 90 just maybe make it that much easier but like I said, it's basically a reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. You know, you got to put put your tie rod and everything back in. So basically all I got to do now is um, drop the, put the wheel on, drop it down. I'll torque this. I don't know what this torque spec is. Um, Google it. I'll, maybe I'll, I'll put it in the comments or something or in the description of the video what the torque for this is. Um, yeah, torque that guy. Um there's torque specs for everything and you probably, I'm, I'm going to tell you, do as I say, not as I do, you probably should torque them. But if you've been doing this, you know, for a long time, you, you know, I mean, um, there, you know, some guys get torque wrench out for everything and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's a lot of guys that don't, um, but just make sure everything's good and tight, reroute your wire. And when you take the caliper off, you pull this bolt off right here. You can take the hose and everything and set it down because you don't ever let a caliper dangle. It'll freaking, it'll destroy that hose. Um, but yeah, just kind of put everything back the way that it was. And uh, so yeah, like I say, um, this tin cap, um, if you, I'm sure that they're very inexpensive to buy new ones. And you can see I screwed this one up royally. So I would advise buying a set of them. Um, I can fix this and I can reuse it. It won't be an issue. But yeah, I would advise buying these, you know, new set of them just because. Um, but yeah, this right here is an important, this is an important torque spec right here. Because if you get it too tight, it'll bind on your bearing. And if it's too loose, your bearing doesn't have enough support. So this one right here, I, I highly advise getting a torque wrench out for these. It's like head bolts and broad main bolts. You know what I mean? You you torque those. Uh, I mean, unless you're an idiot. But anyways, so like I say, um... Reassembly is just the, the opposite of disassembly. Just make sure everything's routed, you know, where kind of where it's not going to rub on the tire. And uh, that's that. So uh, we're going to be back in here to do brakes on it. I just noticed that every time you touch something else on this truck, something else screwed up. But anyways, um, that's that. Thanks for watching. Be on the lookout for some more videos. Um, I quit my job. So I'm going to be making some videos and uh, going to be... Uh, with any luck, get a get the shop actually legal and so I can work on other people's stuff and uh, go from there. But anyways, thanks for watching.